Amen. Well, we welcome you tonight to the Lord's Church. We're broadcasting live from our home in uh, Oakland, Tennessee. Uh, we're using the church, of course, tonight for uh, all this week, actually, for our kids' camp. And Kid Adventure, Adventure is what it's called. And uh, they're having a great time. I'll tell you what. We had to limit our size and let them use the entire sanctuary so that we can space out seating and make sure everything is within guidelines. So uh, that's why we told you we would be broadcasting strictly streaming only tonight. But we're so glad you're with us. And uh, if you are with us, let us know you're watching. Uh, it's always nice to see people comment. If you want to say amen, say amen. Uh, text it on there and uh, type it in and send it. and uh, Let us know you're watching, all right? Amen. Well, we welcome you tonight to our streaming service. We're so glad you're here. And we're just looking forward to sharing a good word with you tonight. So are you ready? Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now for this wonderful evening tonight. We thank you for uh, this time of worshiping you and magnifying you before we get into the word. And Lord, we just give you praise and we give you glory right now in Jesus' name. We also, Lord, in advance, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for uh, uh, anointing the words and the scriptures we're going to be using. Lord, let it minister to people. Let it minister encouragement, life to them. Lord, may they realize who they are in you and, and the real power and authority that they have. And Lord, we just give you praise and thanks for that right now. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's sing a little song tonight and we'll, uh, uh, before we get into the word. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord with me at your home there. Amen. Just lift your hands, close your eyes, and magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God.
God. Man, we're so glad you're with us tonight. We're looking forward to a good word for you tonight. Got a few announcements we want to share with you, uh, just real quick here uh, uh, to tell you about. And first one is, you know, uh, uh, about our kid adventure camp. We're having a great time. I believe there was about two kids last night. Maybe there might have been a third. Got born again last night. Isn't that a good report? And they're having a great time tonight, even in the rain. It's raining here a little bit. But we know they're having a great time. They're hearing a great word, and we're excited about that. Amen. So be praying for them all this week. It's uh, Tuesday through Friday, and we know uh, uh, God's going to move in the church and these kids' lives. Parents were so excited to be able to, to do this, but we also had to make sure we did it the right way. And uh, We have a temperature check at the door. We got hand sanitizers. We got the seats all spaced apart properly, and uh, they're just real excited about it. And it's a privilege and an honor to minister to your children. I'll tell you what, any church, anywhere, children and youth ministry needs to be first. Amen. It's important uh, because uh, your children and your youth are a big part of your church. And it's so vital, so important, just like adult ministry, just like any other ministry in the church. But we take care of our kids and our young people because they're so vital to, to the generation that is coming tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. Also, too, we want to remind you, if you don't receive the words of encouragement and you'd like to, all you got to do uh, uh, is sign up by going uh, to our website at thelordschurchmemphis.com. You can click contact there. You can sign up for the words of encouragement. What we do, we send out, I send out a, uh, a special email every day. We've been doing it ever since this whole virus fiasco started. And we, we try to give you a word of encouragement, literally a word of encouragement. And each day they're different. I kind of go through my devotions each morning, sometimes late at night, and I'll search for things to share with you. And uh, I'll find things that speak to me personally. And if it speaks to me personally, I'm going to share it with you. So if you would like to receive that, all you got to do, you can even use your own email address, just click contact at the Lord's Church Memphis, type that in, contact at the Lord's Church Memphis.com, and just let us know you want to receive the words of encouragement and uh, make sure we have your the right email for you. We look forward to that. Praise God. Also, too, we want to remind you all the month of July, we're praying for the nation. And in our words of encouragement, we have listed out things that we want you to pray for. Things about our, our, our law enforcement people, about our military, about our president, about all the branches of government, all the way down to the state and local levels. We want you praying for our nation. I can't think of a better time that we need to do this than this week, being July the 4th. But doing it from now on for a while, I think we should. I really do. We should always be praying first for those in authority, of course. But, you know, it's just important right now that we pray for the country. And I just believe that is paramount for us as believers, that we pray for the country. And I hear a big amen on that. I think that's very important, praise God. And then uh, uh, tonight, as you would get ready to give, uh, we just encourage you, you know, as we've been praying for you, we've been believing God that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, prosper and be blessed during this time, as we've been sharing with you. Uh, uh, no matter what's going on, you'll never wither, you'll never starve, you'll never be without, because the blessing and the hand of God is on your life. Amen. If you're giving tonight, you can go online and click Donate and follow the instructions specifically. And you can give via PayPal that way. Or if you'd like, you can mail your offering in uh, to the P.O. Box 392, Oakland, Tennessee, 38060. And I, I want to say this again like I did on Sunday. We do not receive mail at the church. All of our mail comes to the P.O. Box. So make sure you send it to the proper address. Uh, the church address doesn't really have a mailbox there to receive anything. So uh, if you're sending an offering, make sure you send it to the P.O. Box 392, Oakland, Tennessee, 38060. And of course, uh, as you do that, uh, uh, we just want to thank you in advance. We're so thankful for your faithfulness. God's been really good through all this, and I know he's been good to each one of you. The scripture we pray for you every day of the week, literally, is in times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Man, we're believing that for you. Melissa and I are praying that over you. Pastor Matthew, Pastor Donna are praying that over you. We're just believing, God, that you are blessed. You never wither. You never, ever are without. You always have enough. You have plenty in store. Amen? 
Because that's what our God is. He's a good God. He loves you. He wants you blessed. Amen. So remember that. But we're praying for you. So as you get ready to give tonight, right now I just want to pray for you, okay? If you have your offering, if you're about to give online on your computer or whatever it is you have in your hand right there, hold on to it. Plus pray over it together. Amen. If you're with your spouse right now, hold hands together. Let's be in agreement together. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you that you are blessing all of our folks at the Lord's Church, those that watch online, those who are, 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 are a part of our church fellowship as members who attend here on a regular basis. Lord, we speak blessings over them tonight. We thank you that they're blessed going in and they're blessed going out. They're blessed in everything that they set their hands to. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the thanks right now. Devil, we remind you you're under our feet. And, the, and that which we hold in our hands tonight as we give didn't come from this world, but it came from our Father who is in heaven. And Lord God, it is you that we honor. It is you that we worship with our giving tonight. And we just give you praise and we give you glory right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. You know, tomorrow when you're outside, if you're wearing a mask or whatever you're doing, remember when you leave, you're on the mission field every day. Amen. Praise God. God's always moving in our lives, and it's just important. Tonight, I want to share something with you. I was really thrilled. I watched uh, uh, my pastor in Cleveland, Tennessee, Mark Strickland, tonight at Cleveland Christian Fellowship. He was sharing about government and authority, and tonight... I want to share with you three things about your authority in Christ Jesus. And, and literally, my title tonight is, You Control the Narrative. You, my brother and sister, control the narrative. Amen? I want to get a drink here real quick. Amen. You control the narrative. Amen. You know, you and I are living in the most crazy time we could ever live in. Who would have thought we would live through a, 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 a so-called pandemic? Uh, I think when the stats are all said and done, it's not going to be as bad as everybody has predicted. But all that being said, I, or the good news is that they are now have changed the recovery rate to a 99% recovery rate. And that's an amazing thing. But who would have thought we would live through a time like this? I know as a pastor... Uh, former youth pastor, a former associate pastor, a worship leader, and whole everything I ever did in my life, I never dreamed. I never dreamed we would live in such a time as this. Uh, but here we are. And, and, and in the midst of all this, it's an intense time. And, and, and you know, uh, I, I really believe with all my heart, as we've been sharing on Sunday mornings, we stand in victory. I mean, the blood of Jesus is more than enough. His resurrection power is is on the inside of us, as we've been sharing with you from last Sunday. But, you know, this isn't the time that we cower in fear or that we get, uh, you know, all, all paranoid about everything and, and panic and all that. You know, this is a time for you and me to use the authority that God has given us because he gave us the power to control the narrative. Amen. He gave you and he gave me the power to control the narrative. Hallelujah. I wrote this on one of my social media pages. Uh, the same demonic forces that you and I deal with, they're the same ones, the same demonic forces that Jesus defeated for you and for me. He whooped them all one time for us. Amen. And you know, he defeated them. And because he defeated them, you and I have the victory. We're not looking for it. We're not looking under things saying, is the victory here? No. No, you have the victory. Amen. You have the victory. Hallelujah. In fact, if you will use your authority that you have in Christ Jesus, you'll have command over all of your tomorrows. Did you hear what I just said? If you will use your authority, use your faith, use your power that God gave you, if you'll use your God-given authority that he's given you, you can control and command all of your tomorrows. Amen. You have a voice, and that voice needs to be uh, 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 amplified and spoken. You need to speak words of faith out of your mouth. Hallelujah. It's important. Praise God. See, you and I, again, we control the narrative. We control the narrative. I want to read you a, a passage of Scripture in, in Luke's Gospel, verse 19. And I want to show it to you in, in three different translations. Actually, I want to read... Uh, two of them uh, uh, to you, and you see it here on the screen. 
Uh, but it's Luke uh, 10, 19. And I'm going to read one out of a, a special book that I, I, I got a, a while back. But Luke 10, 19, Jesus told us, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over how much? All, all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you see that there? Behold, I give you the authority. Jesus gave you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the devil, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you or hurt me. Amen. Praise God. You know, with the Passion Translations, I want you to see this. It's really good. It says, now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over his kingdom. Talking about the devil's kingdom. To trample over the devil's kingdom, you will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing, nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Man, praise God. That's good news, isn't it? Glory to God. We have authority. Did you hear what I said? We have authority. Amen. Well, let me, let me tell you this too. Uh, there's a passage uh, that I want to read to you here from the, the Johnson uh, paraphrase. And uh, these are books that are out of print. I have uh, Matthew and Mark. In fact, tomorrow morning when you get your words of encouragement, I'm going to be quoting out of this. And uh, it's really good. Uh, he has uh, things about the heart of Paul and all of Paul's letters. But these are super powerful, and you can still find them if you search for them. But if you know me, I love to collect uh, for different translations of the Word, uh, whether, especially New Testament, because uh, you can read so much. And a lot of translations, as I said, you can't find anymore. And some of them are priceless if you can own them. And I'm really excited that I've got a whole library of things that are just out of print, you can't get and it's just awesome to go back and dig through these treasures. But let's focus on uh, uh, this scripture one more time, but reading to you out of the, uh, the Ben Campbell Johnson translation. Uh, looking here at verse 19, uh, and just listen to what I'm saying here, because this is really good. Uh, Luke 10 and verse, i got to find it here. I don't have my glasses on. There we go. Indeed, I give you authority over every form through which our enemy works. I love how that reads. Indeed, Jesus said, indeed, I give you authority over every form, every form through which our enemy works. And then listen to this. And no expression of his power will hurt you. No expression of his power will hurt you. And he goes on, Jesus goes on. But don't, don't celebrate your power over the spirits. Rather, celebrate the fact that you have a relationship with God. See, God's the one who gives us that authority. Through Jesus and that work that he did for us, uh, God backs up that authority. Amen. He's backing it up for you and me. Hallelujah. And that's good to know. Amen. You know, I, I, I've known about my authority in Christ Jesus for a long time, many years now. And, but every time I study, any time I dig through uh, maybe books I've read before, I'll reread them. I'll go back and look at different scriptures from a different light. It's the reason I like to collect different translations of the Bible, because you go back and you read the commentaries of what some of these scholars wrote. And I tell you, the whole idea about authority has just really come alive all over again when you go back and restudy things. That's why, you know, there's uh, there, you should never be looking for something deeper, something Something that gives you more goosebumps. You know, Brother Hagin always said it's the ABCs of faith that keep you right. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who ain't right. You know what I'm talking about? They're crazier than a one-eyed road lizard. They're not even focused on the word of truth. They're out in la-la land, and they, they, nothing seems to work for them. Their prayers don't seem to work. Nothing seems to work. But they've gotten away from the truth of the word and not operating the way that it should. Folks, we need to stay on base. Amen. Uh, if you want to bat right, you better stay, keep your foot on the base and so forth so you can do the things you need to do, uh, run, that, run those bases and score that point, amen, all those things. Uh, but listen to what I'm saying here. 
I, I've known about my authority for in Christ for a long time. <clears throat> but there's times when something comes up. Uh, let's say, for instance, this whole virus fiasco. You know, at first, <clears throat> you're kind of like, wow, okay, who would have thought? But wow. And you know, for a period of a, a, a part of the day, I was like, man, this is big. And just wow, hearing all the details and all the different things. And then they start shutting down airports, you know, no travel in or out and all that stuff. And, and then it hit me, well, dear God, we got authority. We should be speaking that authority. And, and that's important. You know, sometimes we don't remember to use the authority that we've been given. How about you? How many times, you know, the doctor gives you a report or something happens and you kind of react in the flesh instead of reacting in your spiritual and, and God-given authority? Hey, we all do it. We all do it. Amen. And uh, um, sometimes we just allow things to go on that we really should not allow to go on. In other words, you should be putting your foot down instead of sitting there letting, letting yourself be walked all over by uh, powers and oppression that you have authority over. Amen. Well, I believe there's three things you need to know about authority tonight and about your authority in Christ Jesus. So let's get into this tonight and let me share it with you tonight. Well, first one is this. The first one is what authority is, okay? Let's talk about what authority is, all right? You know, the authority that Jesus is talking about in that passage in Luke's gospel in verse 19, chapter 10, it's not about brute force. Everybody just look at your neighbor there at home and say brute force. There you go. It's like you're in church, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful? Uh, uh, Luke 10, 19, you know, Jesus wasn't talking about brute force. You know, somebody's got a club going to beat you down, brute force. No. Uh, the, the authority and the power that we're talking about here, and the authority and the power that Jesus was talking about, is a delegated power. A delegated power. It's a lot like uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement, police officers, sheriff deputies, the sheriff, everybody, um, uh, Homeland Security, the FBI, they all operate, uh, they all operate uh, under, the, uh, under the law. In fact, they're supposed to be uh, protectors of the law, all right? And uh, when a policeman, you know, when a policeman steps out in front of traffic and he holds his hand up to stop traffic, he's not stopping cars, he's not stopping trucks with brute force. No, on the contrary, he's stopping them with the delegated authority that that officer has. I'll say that again. When he's uh, doing traffic uh, work, he's, when he holds his hand up, stop traffic or to wave traffic to go or to send somebody to the right or to the left, uh, he's not doing it with brute force. He's not doing it through his own strength. He is doing it because he's doing it with delegated authority. Delegated authority that comes from wearing the uniform because he is backed by the law. Do you understand that? Now, that being said, that authority that we have in Christ Jesus has been delegated to us, the body of Christ. That authority has been delegated to us as the, as the body of Christ. Amen. See, you're not stopping the forces of darkness with your brute strength. You're not stopping sickness or, or fear or evil or lack or poverty with your own strength, within your own flesh. No, you're stopping them. You're stopping them with the delegated authority that was given to you by God in Christ Jesus. And you, my brother and sister, you have been backed by the full power of God. Amen. Praise God. How amazing is it that God Almighty himself is the power, the power, the force uh, behind your authority and my authority. Amen. Ephesians 6.10 says, like you see here on the screen, Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. You be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Again, you know, we've been sharing about drawing close to God through different uh, words of encouragement we've given uh, through the emails. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons it jumps out to me in the message tonight is you need to spend time with God so that you're aware of who you are in Christ, so that you can operate and be strong in the Lord and operate in the power of his might and his authority. Amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, man, that's good. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise God. Well, the number two I want to tell you about tonight. Number two is this. Uh, authority. Well, I want to share with you this tonight. This authority we're talking about, this delegated power, it belongs to you and it belongs to me. Amen. The Bible says that you and I are the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't make me special. Every one of you, when you got born again, you became holy in the Lord. Amen. You became holy. His blood cleansed you of all of your sins and washed you clear of all of your unrighteousness. In fact, I think they ought to slap everybody, everybody with a reverend in front of their name because that means holy man or holy woman. Every one of you are holy before the Lord. Every one of you, every one of you, because you came into the body of Christ when you got saved, Every one of you were given the authority of the believer. Amen. Every one of you were given the authority of the believer. The Bible says that you're the body of Christ. That's in 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You're the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the church, right? Jesus is the head of the church. We are his body. He's the vine, we're the branches. We are his body. And his authority is perpetuated through his body. In other words, the authority flows through like power, like lightning, through Christ, through you. That authority is yours. Amen. It belongs to you. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he transferred his authority on earth to his body, the church. The Bible tells us this. And in God's mind, you need to understand this. In God's mind, when Christ was raised from the dead, according to Scripture, we were raised with him. Amen. The body was raised with. We've been given that authority, all right? Uh, Ephesians 2, 6, and this is from the New Living Translation on the screen here. It says uh, that God raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Did you see that? He seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes people just don't think they're worthy. Well, I can never be that. You are that. Well, you are worthy. You have been given this authority. You have the power. You have the name that's above every name. And we should not be afraid to speak that name. Everything that, that, that can be named, both in heaven and earth, uh, is under that name. It's under that name. Amen. You can speak the name of Jesus to cancer. You can speak the name of Jesus to problems. You can speak the name of Jesus to your mountain. You have the authority to move things. You have the authority. So many people are wimpy Christians. Wimpy. When Jesus has called us to be hefty Christians. Amen. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, when, we, when Jesus was raised in God's mind, we were raised with him. Glory to God. You know, uh, again, uh, Ephesians 2, 6 in the Passion Translation reads like this. It says, He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now, listen to this, we are now co-seated with, uh, co-seated as one with Christ. I love the way that reads. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. See, we're one in Jesus. Amen. We're one in Jesus. That's one of the reasons I think, you know, if the, if the, if the darkness, if the evil, uh, the devil himself, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory in that scripture. Because they thought they were only dealing with one person that was a prophet or, you know, he might be the Messiah. And then when he realized who he was, they realized had they known, they would have never done what they did. Because when they killed him off, he rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, they didn't just have one problem anymore, but lights burst all over the place as the gospel went forth and this world changed. See, that authority is in you when you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. Had the devil known, he would have never crucified him because Jesus took away everything he had got from Adam. By one man's offense, death reigned. By another one, all authority was taken back. Amen. I don't have time to go into all of that, but you got to understand, uh, both of both uh, the head and the body are seated uh, in Christ. Amen. 
both the head of the church and the body are seated in heaven together. And, next, and right next to God, right next to God our Father, in the place of power and authority. That means that you're seated there, folks. You're seated there. You're seated in the power position. You understand that? You're seated in the power position. Can I tell you a little story about Pastor Matthew? Pastor Matthew and my brother David, when we lived in Tulsa, they came out and stayed with Melissa and I. They were a lot younger then. And uh, David was actually working at Dry Gulch USA, uh, helping out at the camp with General Roy. And uh, Matthew was there for uh, two weeks staying with us. And we had the Top Gun video game on a, on a Nintendo. And they were playing. And uh, Matthew would be pretty ornery. And, uh, 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 you know, David had the opinion that when he's playing the game, he's in the seat of authority, don't bother me. And uh, Matthew kept coming around his head and whispering in his ears, you're dead, Dave, you're dead, Dave, you're dead, Dave. And finally, David had enough of it. He turned around, dropped the control, and just started pounding on Matthew. Well, I had to jump in to stop it all. But praise God, our, our, our associate pastor, Matthew Farmer, is healthy and whole. My brother didn't hurt him too bad. Amen. But you ought to understand you're seated in the power position. You have the controller. What is that controller? That controller is the power of God. It's the authority that you have in Christ. Amen. You are an heir of, 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 of Jesus. Amen. You're uh, an heir of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 8, 17 talks about you being an heir. That means that everything that belongs to Jesus, it belongs to you and me. It belongs to you and me. Everything includes his authority. That belongs to you as well. Amen. Praise God. Last point tonight. You ready? This authority, this you controlling the narrative, you need to know how to use it. You need to know how to use it. See, when it comes to exercising your authority in Christ, it all revolves around, you ought to write these verses down right now tonight. Write them down. They're not going to be on the screen but Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20, and then Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. Your authority, exercising your authority, those two verses encapsulate who we are and how we're seated with Christ in God, okay? Or, in God, or with God in Christ would be the best way to say that. We are seated. Those scriptures uh, describe to us how we are seated with God in Christ Jesus, okay? Now, I encourage you to get those verses and look at them in different translations and read through them several times. Because the more you will meditate on those verses, you're going to begin to fully grasp who you are in Christ Jesus and the authority that you have. And really realize that you're seated with Him, just like I'm seated in this uh, a stool from our... our, our uh, uh, kitchen uh, table uh, from our kitchen table you know uh, when you realize you're seated with him you, and when you realize that you are the one uh, he moves through then you realize that the devil has no power he has no authority or might or dominion or anything you do you control the narrative you have the power you my brother and sister have the victory and you always always have the law that backs it up, the power that backs it up, that name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen? See, when adversity arises, when trouble comes up, when, when another pandemic might come up, if Jesus tarries in 100 years from now, I don't think it'll be that long, honestly, before he returns. But you know what? If Jesus was to tarry, excuse me, if Jesus was to tarry, and... Uh, 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 some other uh, virus was to come or some sort of pandemic. We've had something every, every, every uh, 10 or 20 years something comes up. Just go back and look at it. It happens. Being something like this, it happens every, about every 100 years. Something happens like this. But you've got to understand, when trouble comes, when adversity comes, when problems come, you should use your authority by speaking out what the Word of God says. By speaking out what the Word of God says. By declaring the name of Jesus over your situation. Amen. I mean, if you've got sickness attacking your body, you can speak. You can say, sickness, and I command you to leave my body in Jesus' name. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, I have the power. I've been seated with him. And the Bible says that by his stripes, I am healed and whole. 
Amen. That's what the Bible says. Nothing wrong with speaking the word. If you've got it written in the scriptures, you've got the will of God right there. There's no wishing, wanting, or waiting for it. It's yours right now. Amen. See, the authority is all wrapped up in that name, the name of Jesus. You know, it's like using, you remember, some of you might remember, some of you that are younger may not remember it, but there was a commercial on years and years ago, and the commercial was about a broker, brokerage firm uh, called E.F. Hutton, and when E.F. Hutton talks, everything got quiet. People turned and began to look. And the, and, the, and, the, and the catch line, the hook line of the commercial was, people, listen. Listen, when you speak the name of Jesus, when you speak the name of Jesus, that name gets things done. That name causes everything else to shush. That name causes the enemy to be silent. That name, that name, is more powerful than you stomping your foot in your front yard to get that mean dog out of your yard. That name is above every name. That name is all you need and, the, and for you to control the narrative and for you to command all of your tomorrows in victory. That name, amen. The name above every name. It's the same, it's the same, it's same, it's the same in the spirit realm. It's the same uh, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in, in any way you could say it, except this one fact you need to understand. And remember, Jesus' name is higher than any name. The name of Jesus is higher than any name. Amen. And that name carries all the weight, all the weight, all the weight of God. Amen. All the weight. It is more powerful than any other name. Philippians 2.9 talks about that. Look that up tonight. You know what? Think about it. When you use the name of Jesus, knowing that you're seated, seated with him at the right hand of God, you're backed up by all the power of God when you speak that name. Amen? Oh, when you speak that name, you're backed up by all the power of heaven. That name is authority, and that name belongs to you. Amen? It carries weight. It carries power. I mean, just think about it. When you use that name, amen, every knee must bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That name is powerful, isn't it? It's powerful. Hallelujah. Every knee must bow to that name, Philippians 2.10. You know, Jesus made it very clear that his name is the key to all authority. And we see that right here in this verse here in John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 13 through 14. Notice what it says. It says, uh, and remember, his name is the key to all authority. Uh, it says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. I could stop right there and preach a mouthful. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, he finishes out by, by those four words, I will do it. Amen? I will do it. Folks, listen to me tonight. You know, you do control the narrative. Remember the story in Acts chapter 3 when Peter and, uh, 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 and, and John uh, encountered the lame man at the gate called Beautiful? Do you remember what they said? They walked up, they saw him there, and immediately, immediately, they spoke and they said, In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That man stood to his feet. That name commands authority. Amen. That name commands authority. It wasn't in their own strength. It wasn't by their own power. You know, uh, they didn't do anything uh, other than command him to get up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You know, it wasn't their own anointing power that raised the man. It was the authority in the name of Jesus. That same authority, folks, belongs to you and me. And, folks, that's how we use it. Amen. That's how we use it. Remember, you control the narrative. You control the narrative. I can't tell you how important it is that we remember that. Those words, you control the narrative. When you're praying for this nation... You control the narrative. It is time for the body of Christ to rise up and take their place of authority. 
This day that we're living right now, it is our time. This is, this is the most glorious time for the church. This is the most glorious time for the body of Christ. And nobody, nobody should be, should be weak anymore. We should stand up, pull our bridges up, straighten our shoulder, set your chin, and speak the power of the name of Jesus. You know, the prayers of a righteous man or woman availeth much. It makes tremendous power available, as it says in James. You know, folks, you control the narrative. I cannot say that enough. And this day and this hour that we're living in is the most glorious hour of the church in the history of man. The apostles long for this time. You're living in it. You're walking in it. And you have all the goods to speak that name and control the narrative and command victory for all of your tomorrows. Can I hear a big amen tonight? Praise God. Let me pray for you tonight before we go. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. I thank you, Lord, that this word burns in people's hearts, that they realize the importance of speaking the name of Jesus, that they realize the importance and the knowledge of the power that we have, the authority of the believer. Oh, that at that name, every knee shall bow, every sickness, poverty, lack, disease, germs, COVID-19, any kind, anything, polio, muscle disorders, cancer, anything has to bow to the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name right now, if anybody's dealing with anything, in Jesus' name, we command you to be healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you've got problems in your finance, you've got a circumstance, we command that circumstance to go in the name of Jesus. We call your financial situation to turn around. Our God's a turnaround king. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name right now. And Lord, we just thank you for these things. We, we call this, this, this bunch that's watch, watching tonight a blessed bunch. Filled with praise, filled with power, filled with glory because they operate in their authority as a believer. And Lord, we just thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, don't miss Sunday. Our doors will be back open. Kids camp will be over with. Uh, we'll begin service at 1030. We're going to be doing uh, the last message on our series called Rebirth. It's all about and when the dust and ashes settles, we're still, we're still standing in victory. We are. And it's because of that authority. But i got a great message for you on Sunday to kind of wrap it up and put a big bow on it. So I hope you'll be at church. If not, you know, watch online. We know some are still not comfortable getting out yet, and we understand that. Uh, watch at home. We'll be streaming live right at 1030, right here. And then uh, after the service, the message will be posted to the church website. Same thing tonight. We love you. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you here uh, at church on Sunday or online. We love you. We'll talk to you later.